Any talk about observability begins with the three pillars. These being logs, metrics, and of course, traces. We generate logs from our applications. Plain text worked in the past, but in 2025, structured logging is the way to go. These logs are collected by an agent and then stored somewhere, typically a search engine like Elasticsearch. And then we'd have some UI on top that lets us search the logs to understand what's going on. Metrics are collected regularly and aggregated at source. Common metrics would be resource utilization, request rates and throughput, error rates and counts, response times and latency, and so on. And again, we need to store those metrics somewhere, likely a metric store like Prometheus. Metric stores typically enforce sampling and pre-aggregations using counters, histograms, and gauges. And we need a UI for this data as well, perhaps something like Grafana. Finally, we've got traces, which document the journey of requests as they move through different parts of a system. So we might have traces for HTTP request flows, database query execution paths, authentication flows, and more. These traces are often distributed, which means we can see the path of execution through a system. This is common in microservices connected by a trace ID. And this data gets stored as well, possibly in a system like Zipkin, which uses backends like Cassandra or Elastic for storage. And Zipkin has a UI to make sense of this data. Hopefully this diagram shows that we've created some problems for ourselves because of the artificial boundary between our observability data. The most obvious problem is that we're paying and or maintaining three different systems for this data. But it's not only that, when debugging incidents, we need to manually stitch together data from these three separate systems. And this leads us to the blog post by Ivan Bermistrov titled, All You Need Is Wide Events, Not Metrics, Logs, and Traces. Now, if wide events are the answer, we can use a much simpler architecture. So we can replace the individual stores with a column store, preferably one that supports semi-structured data. So let's remove those separate storage systems and replace them with just the one. And we'll store our logs, metrics, and traces in there. And let's have a single UI to explore all this data. And we can also have a single agent to collect the data instead of individual ones. So our stack now contains three components. We've got our collector, the data store, and then the UI. We can then choose each component of the stack separately. So for example, we could use OTEL, Vector, or FluentD for collection. For storage, any column store would probably work. And then for the UI, there are a variety of choices as well. One option is the click stack, which offers all components in an open source, opinionated way. But we'll get into the click stack in our next video.